Hi, it's Chirag here. I invite you to join me for this impromptu five minute training session. As I was leaving a friend's house today, my four legged friend Edgar wanted to come out the front door with me. Edgar is a gorgeous one year old Great Dane Cross Irish Wolfhound and he weighs nearly 80 kilos already. It made it really difficult to get out the front door. So we decided to do a little education session here, a training session, a coaching session, to teach Edgar to do an incompatible behavior to running out the front door. So I asked Edgar to move away from the door and lie down. And I did this using a lure or a food magnet. If you imagine, if you hold a North Pole and a South Pole magnet close together, they attract. If you hold a treat on the dog's nose and you move that hand slowly, you can guide the dog's body wherever you want the dog to go without any force at all. And so I'm able to use a food magnet to guide Edgar into a down position. And then I decide to pay Edgar for that behavior. Because when you pay a behavior, you make that behavior get stronger. And so we call it reinforcement. If you reinforce a house, the house gets stronger. If you reinforce behavior, that behavior gets stronger. It happens more often. It, often. it can happen quicker. It happens for longer. And so if it doesn't happen when I give that paycheck, when I give that tree, it tells me something about that tree. It tells me that that tree isn't a sufficient paycheck for that behavior. So maybe I need to write a different number on that check. Maybe rather than giving one tree, I need to give two or three treats. Or rather than giving a boring tree, I need to give something more exciting. And that's just a fact of life. We get paid to go work. And if we work harder, we expect more money. Same with the dog. And so what we do is we pay Edgar for lying down. I take some steps away from him. And if I take a step away and he stays in that down position, I walk over and I focus on giving positive consequences, treats. And what I find is those treats are functioning as reinforcers because I notice the behavior of lying down is getting stronger because it's happening for longer. And I'm able to start opening that front door slowly. If I open that front door and Edgar gets up, all I do is close the front door, wait a few seconds, and then teach Edgar what I want him to do. There's really no need to say, bad dog, no, don't do that. Because the dog doesn't understand English. And also, they don't know they're doing anything wrong. Because how many dogs do you know that live around doors in the wild? It's a human construct. It's a human concept. And so these human games, we have to educate dogs to do them. The dogs don't know right or wrong. The dogs just learn, oh, when I go near that front door, my owner sometimes gets angry or dangerous. They don't really understand what you're trying to teach them. Whereas if you take a few minutes, and you can see this video clip is under five minutes, around five minutes. And we've already taught Edgar in a few minutes that lying down pays off. And when you lie down, when I walk towards the front door, good things happen. So in the future, Edgar's likely to lie down away from the front door when I go towards the front door because that's the behavior that pays off. And when we make things fun for animals, they wanna play our games. And also, when we don't use force and conflict, what we find is we get less aggressive behavior. It's just like people, when you push their buttons, if you push people around, if I was to grab Edgar's collar and push him away from that door or start pushing him all the time, what I could start to do is shorten that fuse. And with people, if you push people around, at one point they're gonna snap. And that's what happens with dogs too. When we push them around, they snap. And so we don't wanna do that. We wanna focus on listening to the dog's body language, listening to their whispers, and they have no reason to shout or scream. And so Edgar stands up there. I just close the door for a second, give Edgar a moment. And then I ask him to lie down. And we do that again and notice how many more seconds or minutes he's lying down for without getting up and how I'm able to open the door nearly all the way. Now, what we're doing is we're using successive approximations. These are small steps to get to our eventual goal. And so rather than just walking to the front door and opening it straight away, you notice I took a step away, came back, gave him a treat, took two steps away, came back, gave him a treat took three steps away, came back, gave him a treat, opened the door a little bit, come back, give him a treat, open the door a bit more until eventually we can open the whole door. Go practice with your dog, have fun, show lots of love. 